Today, I'm going to be giving away some kits where you can make your own gold pan. There may be some assembly required, but all you've got to do is uh, pay for postage and the, the kit is yours. G'day. If you're here for the first time, my name's Stuart Chignall and welcome to my channel. If you're a returning subscriber, extra welcome because it's always good to have people back. Uh, today, uh, we're going to be doing the second video in the series of the Medieval Prospector. The most important tool for any prospector of any period is something to pan with. This is going to be the first of a, of a few videos where we're going to be making a pan in a medieval style. Uh, but I said in the intro that I'd be giving away kits um, for making your own pan. Um, there's a limited number of those, so first in best dressed. And but more than just a single pan, you really re you really want two pans because then you can classify from one into another, or you can pan from one into the other. So the kit is going to be the material for you to make yourselves two pans. Here it is. Been cut to length. Um, if you want to see the video on that and how I was reconditioning this uh, Japanese katana saw. Um, I'm not sure, I probably won't have published it yet because I'm doing this one first, but if you subscribe and hit the bell notification, when it comes out you won't miss it. Now I really have no idea where all my wedges are for this. So I might have to make some. Um, but we're not going to be doing that today. Previously when I've done, done bowls, I've used this tool. Now this actually isn't a bowl adds, this is actually a gutter adds. Um, a bowl adds has a more consistent curve to the bottom and it doesn't really have those lipped sides. This is really for you know creating trenches in wood. Um, but it does the job and with some chisels and some of the shoemakers tools I've got, you can make some pretty really decent bowls out of it. And I've done that and you know, given away to friends and stuff. This is a bowl adds. Um, but it's not ready to use. So in this video, we're going to be restoring it, um, uh, polishing the back of it, putting a decent bevel on it, sharpening it up, and giving it a handle. All right, step one is there's not a lot of rust on it, but we're just going to stick it in the electrolyte bath and um, clean it up. Okay, well that is looking pretty good. A bit of work ahead of us, polishing that up. In particular, this area here is quite pitted. Another major pit there. So it's going to take a bit of work, but it's not too bad. But what is really cool, now that we've cleaned it up, is visible just in all the pits in the dish, there is some sort of maker's mark. Now I'm finding it very hard to make that out. But I might try and do a rubbing or maybe use some fancy um, digital software to see if I can get that maker's mark to, uh, to pop, to clean up a bit. But anyway, it's, um, yeah, sand, sand, sand. Normally, I like to do a much better job than this, um, but I've had a few issues. My linisher, my old linisher is finally dying. I think the brushes are gone on the motor, so it just doesn't have any, you know, oops. Um, so you can see all sorts of scratches in there. I would really, really like to have those out, but well, I'm, I just take forever to do by hand. And I'm out of time. So what I've done is I've got it, I've just kept working until the edge, all the scratches on the edge were doing, and I've tried not to be too hasty and sort of round the edge. So I've tried to keep that curve consistent so it doesn't cause me problems later. Like I could, I, I could have just put a bevel on the back, but then that nice gentle curved radius wouldn't be maintained and yeah, so not so just I just spent a fair bit of time cleaning that up by hand, which took forever. Alright, now the inside, we've got a bunch of these sharp, scythe sharpening stones. Won't go into using them because I've already shown that in another video uh, where I was restoring Sarah's great or oh, great great grandfather's scythe so we could use it. I've done a pretty good job of getting this ready. It, it's not brilliant. Now that looks horrible in the camera, 
but there is a polished line of sharpened mostly sharpened steel on the edge it's not brilliant and I must admit I have rounded the bevel somewhat which is you know poor work so I'm gonna have to redo this at a later date but it will get me out of trouble and get this pan under construction shortly but I've still got to do a bit more work there um, by hand um, with the stones and so I'll get on with that this does take forever which is why you should never lend anyone any of your edge tools not even for five seconds unless they know how to sharpen by hand because if they don't they have zero appreciation of how much effort it is to, uh, to put a good edge on a tool. So, and, that, and if all you chefs, same with your kitchen knives as well. It's like you put all this effort into sharpening and sharpening and sharpening and sharpening, and then someone just throws them on the kitchen sink and they get dinged. So it's really annoying. So the next thing we need is a blank of wood for the handle. Uh, now somewhere, I've got some uh, ash blanks. If I can find one of those, it'd be perfect, but I might just have to go and get an oak one. Did a hive removal over the weekend, and I think the bees I've brought home are st still cross with me. Well, things are a bit interesting now, but holy cow. <laughs> All right, that's a good, bam, bam. I think there's a stack of blanks just about there. So what I think we'll do instead is we'll make the handle out of some oak. This is one of the last times I'm going to use this axe. I'm passing it on to a new owner because this is going to be a prize in uh, Chris from Vogus Prospecting's uh, competition to raise money for Beyond Blue. Uh, so if you would like to win a Japanese axe, which has had like, a couple of days, <laughs> couple of days of me sharpening and polishing it mostly by hand since my Linisha died. Um, then get over here to his website, check it out, get onto the site, donate some money, and if you can make it, uh, I'll see you in Beechworth uh, this weekend. If not, well, you can enter online and um, I'm pretty sure he'll post uh, the prizes wherever, unless he decides to keep them, because there's some pretty cool prizes. So what am I doing here? This ads has a tapered socket to receive the handle, and that's why I put the ads on the handle blank and mark inside it with a pencil because that's what I've got to reduce the handle down to to fit within the socket of the ads. I've done that by, first of all, cutting the blank to a wedge shape. And then I've taken the wedge, cut it down to a blunt square point where the dimensions of the square are equal to uh, the diameter of the narrow point of the socket. Then I trim the corners off the point to, to make it an octagon. And once I've done that, what it, it's a process of repetitively fitting the handle to the socket, tapping it home, kicking it out with the drift that I, I kept made from a piece of scrap wood. And then wherever you see a mark from the socket, just gently chopping that off and then paring that off to bring it down to dimension. But one thing you have to have to do is you've got to mark the way the socket, the way the handle fits into the socket so that every time you are putting it back the same way. And so what I've done with that is I've marked a line on one side, which is the back of the ads, and I've marked a semicircle on the other side, which is the blade side of the ads. So that way I can quickly um, orientate the handle to to the ads and put it in exactly the same way every time. And I'll leave those marks on there until I've finished the handle. Oh. 
Right, well let's, um, let's fit it again. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. I've, I've been looking forward to using that tool for so long uh, and I just haven't had the time. Uh, it would be more than four years since I stopped bringing in tools from France and Germany and that wasn't in the last batch. So it's been sitting there waiting for me to get to it and now I have, so I'm so pleased. I'm already sure it's not gonna disappoint. It is fabulous steel. Um, if there's some steel, you can just tell as you're putting it across the stones. It's got a different feel to it and that one felt beautiful. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting that bowl carved or that pan carved. Uh, so yeah, if you want to see that, make sure you come back and to help you to do that, uh, best to click the you know, subscribe button and the notification button so that when the videos are published, you'll get notified. Uh, I'm probably not going to finish that bowl before the weekend because um, it's Wednesday today. Um, uh, I've got to do logs tomorrow and then I'm off to Beechworth for the weekend. If anyone wants to come up with me um, from around town or whatever, then get in touch and we can carpool. Or alternatively, uh, I might see you there. And if you haven't seen any of Chris's videos, he, does, he has a lot of fun painting for gold. Um, whereas my channel is all sorts of stuff, prospecting, bees, woodwork, foraging. His is a dedicated prospecting channel. Um, so if you're into prospecting stuff, go check out his channel. He has a lot of fun. Finds more gold than me. Um, and um, I might know how to swing an ax better than him, but he knows how to swing a pan better. Or at least where to put his shovel <laughs> to find the gold. <laughs> so anyway, I'll catch you guys later and um, see you in the next video or see you in Beechworth. Have fun. Catch you later.